What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so I want to go ahead and continue with this top 10 role players uh, list. I know some of you guys don't agree with uh, a particular person that's on this list, but, you know. And maybe I'll maybe I make change my mind and, and think he's not top 10 as I think further about it. But I went ahead and put him on there because of the Defensive Player of the Year award that he won, the four championships. And, you know, he did have a – he has had an integral role on that team as a role player. See, the argument is that we've been making is that he's not a Hall of Famer. He's not. Uh, but as a role player, he's up there. I don't like Draymond Green. I can't stand him. But I will be intellectually dishonest if I said I don't think he is one of the best role players, at least in his prime, that we've seen. Overrated, but it is what it is. Let's do a brief recap. At number 10, I had A.C. Green. At number 9, Draymond Green. At number 8, the much-forgotten Frank Ramsey. And at number 7, I have Danny A. Now, of course, a lot of young people don't even remember uh, Danny Ainge was a basketball player. <clears throat> in his career, he played with the Boston Celtics, uh, a team in which he won, I believe, two championships. He also played with, after that, the Sacramento Kings, where he posted his best numbers as a professional. They played with the Portland Trail Blazers, and then finally, he finishes off his career with the Phoenix Suns. I believe he played from, I want to say, 1981 or 82 to, to 95, uh, one of the two. And uh, matter of fact, let's look at his resume. He was six foot five. So he's a bigger guard than many people remember him for. A lot of people think for some reason that Danny Ainge was six foot two, six foot one, he was six foot five guard. 190 pounds when he played. He went to BYU, Brigham Young University from 1977 to 81. So it was 81. He was the 31st overall pick in the second round. Selected by the Boston Celtics. He played from 81 to 95. And uh, coached a brief period of time, too, in the NBA, and I mentioned the teams that he played for. Uh, he coached the Phoenix Suns for a couple of seasons, but as far as his overall resume, two-time NBA champion, he was an all-star <clears throat> in 87-88. That's the year that uh, Danny Ainge set what was then the NBA record for most three-pointers made in the season at 148. Uh, that record, I think, only lasted one year, I believe. I think the very next year, if my memory serves me correctly, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael Adams broke the record. He won the John R. Wooden Award in 1981. He was the NABC Player of the Year in 81. Consensus First Team All-American in 81. Third team All American NABC 80, fourth team All American NABC 1979. He was the WAC Player of the Year in 81, four time first team All WAC 1978 through 81. He's number 22 retired by the BYU Cougars, and second team Parade All American 1977. Won a championship as an executive of the Boston Celtics back in 2008, and he was named Executive of the Year that same season. For his NBA career, he averaged 11.5 points per game, to go along with four assists and 1.1 steals. Uh, he was also a good three-point shooter for his career, 37.8% from downtown, a good foul shooter, great foul shooter, at just under 85%. As a matter of fact, his best years in the NBA were between 1984 
in 1990. And during that six-year stretch, Danny Ainge averaged 14.9 points, 3.5 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 1.4 steals, 48% shooting from the floor, 39% from downtown, and 87% from the foul line during that stretch of his NBA career. So he was a very, very good role player, man. Feisty, competitive. Um, didn't didn't uh, back down. I mean, he was just a perfect personality and a great fit for the Boston Celtics. One thing about Danny Ainge, too, is that um, he didn't leave a shot he didn't, he didn't like. Uh, he was a guy that would shoot the ball a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, considering that he was on a team with Bird, McHale, Parrish, Ainge, he wasn't shy about shooting the ball. He wasn't one of those guys you had to ask him or, or, or imbuing him uh, to be more offensively, um, to be more offensively uh, active-minded. Danny Ainge also, and this is something that's not put out there a lot. Danny Ainge was a great athlete. And I know the stigma. People look at him, think, you know, one thing. But the guy was a great athlete. As a matter of fact, he was a three-sport star, if I'm not mistaken. He was a three-sport star in high school. He played basketball at a high level. He played football at a high level. And he played baseball at a high level. As a matter of fact, Danny Ainge briefly played in the major in the major league baseball. He played for the Toronto Blue Jays for about two seasons. Uh, he batted two twenty, uh, drove in thirty seven runs, hit two home runs. Not a great player, but he was good enough to make the pros. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to be really, really damn good in baseball to make the pros. No matter what people might say about certain athletes, Michael Jordan ever. The fact that they were able to make the pros, well, Jordan didn't make the pros, I take that back. Jordan made the minors. Ainge made the pros. So if you even make the pros, you're really damn good. You know what I'm saying? Um, not great by their standards, but you're good. And like I said, he was uh, really good in football in, in high school. Um, Danny Ainge also... Appeared in six NBA Finals, if I'm not mistaken. He appeared in the Finals in 1984, 85, uh, 86, 87, 1992 with the Portland Trailblazers, and 1993 back-to-back -back with the Phoenix Suns. So he faced, in the NBA Finals in his NBA career, uh, he faced the likes of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, uh, Akeem Olajuwon, Ralph Sampson, and later on, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. So he had a, a, a hell of a ride, a, a hell of a run in the NBA as a role player. Um, he was very integral in those championship teams as well. Uh, later on, of course, in the playoffs, he also faced against the likes of Akeem Olajuwon and, you know, other other great one-time players. Getting on the basketball, uh, the baseball thing, Ainge is just one of 13 athletes who have played in the NBA and Major League Baseball. The others being Frank Baumholst, Hank Bissotti, Gene Conley, Chuck Connors who you may remember, those of you who are old enough to remember, played the Rifleman uh, back in that series back in the 1950s. Uh, Dave, Bush, uh, Dave DeBusher, uh, Dick Grote, who passed away last year, Steve Hamilton, Mark Hendrickson, Cotton Nash, Ron Reed, Dick Ricketts, and Howie Schultz are the only players to play in Major League Baseball and in the NBA. And in his heyday, he was known for his shooting prowess, especially from outside. He could facil facilitate well. Um, 
when playing on the Boston Celtics, of course he had to play his position. You know what I'm saying? He was a role player. That was Larry Bird's team. Of course, led with Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale. And I forget to mention Dennis Johnson, who also sacrificed his game offensively because he was there more for his defensive uh, capabilities. But when he was with the Sacramento Kings, Danny Ainge, he was able to be more offensively um, aggressive. And I think the first half year he was there, he averaged over 20 points per game. And I think the next year he averaged 17 or 18 points a game. And um, as a matter of fact, I want to see something before I go further with Danny Ainge. I want to check something out here. I think he was traded midway through the 88-89 season. Yeah, he was traded uh, <clears throat> late February of eight, in 89 to the Sacramento Kings, which was not a very popular move at the time in Boston. And I'm just looking at uh, some of his performances. Danny Ainge had a, I'm looking at it right now, his scoring went way up. And it's interesting because the last game that he played as a Boston Celtic, their opponents were the Sacramento Kings. He had seven points in that particular game. But his first game as a, as a Sacramento King, he scored 22 points. Uh, on March 4th, he scored 45 points against the Golden State Warriors, 16 of 29 from the floor, 7 of 8 from the free throw line, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, 6 three-pointers, 6 of 13 from downtown. Later on that season, he had a 36-point game against the Atlanta Hawks. So, now this is a guy, like I said before, that could, uh, when given license, he could light it up. I'm, I'm convinced that in today's NBA, <clears throat> Danny Ainge would have been a big time scorer. You know what I mean? But anyway, at number seven, I have Danny Ainge, man. Feisty, competitive, uh, a huge uh, piece of the success for the Boston Celtics in the 1980s. Um, and even in the more reduced role with the Portland Trailblazers and the Phoenix Suns, there's something there because, look, he was there back to back years. And, you know, those clubs both went to the NBA Finals. Uh, unfortunately for them, they went up against Michael Jordan. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think.